In August of 1989, the Los Angeles Rams traveled west, 5,000 miles west, to Tokyo, the capital of Japan, a city fast becoming the financial and industrial capital of the world. The Rams received a grand welcome, steeped in time-honored tradition. The Rams and the National Football League have succeeded in stretching the helping hand of friendship across the ocean. And Rams owner and president Georgia Frontieri has long realized that on the world stage, football can be more than a game. I've always felt that world peace would be helped and enhanced by young people who do things together, competing or performing. And now football, I think, because it is so typically American, most of the countries are very interested in seeing what the Americans do and how they play. There you go, good. Ready, set, go. For a full week, the ambassadors from Los Angeles honored their host by passing along the finer points of a great American game. For the first time under the NFL's new international policy, an officially sanctioned NFL game was held in Asia with the Tokyo Dome as the venue. The game had long been a dream of the many fans of American football in the Far East, a game that furthered the development of sports exchanges and mutual friendship between the United States and Japan. The Rams beat the 49ers in overtime, but the team came home with much more than the winner's trophy. It's something intangible. You just know that it's happening. Go! that we've shared some common experience and with, with excitement and joy, yes, the sharing. It's a thrill for me to see uh, another country like Japan become so excited and so enamored of something that we can give them. It was, it was quite a thrill. As Georgia Frontieri begins her 12th year as owner and president of the Rams, she looks back on more than a decade of distinction during which she has provided leadership and direction. She heads up a management team that works 12 months a year, fashioning a championship game plan. It's a request, how's that? In 1989, the Rams were one of the NFL's elite teams. And under head coach John Robinson, they returned to the playoffs for the sixth time in seven years. It was the Rams' fate to tease and torture in 1989. They played nine games that were decided in the final minutes, six of them in the last 16 seconds, five as time expired. They were six and three in those close, down-to-the-wire games. Backed into a corner in December, the Rams traveled east on three successive weeks as they clinched a playoff berth in New England, smothered the Eagles in Philadelphia, and then counterpunched their way to an overtime victory over the Giants in New York. The road warriors from Los Angeles had traveled long and hard before they finally hit the canvas against arch rival San Francisco. At the final bell, the 49ers were crowned champions, and the Rams were declared the number one contender. The pieces are in place, and the best is yet to come. Throughout the 1989 season, from the first round to the last, the Los Angeles Rams suffered the hard times and enjoyed the high times in a furious fight to the finish. A successful five-game preseason got the Rams down to fighting weight. The season's opening bell then sounded in Atlanta, where Rams defenders registered five sacks and running back Greg Bell came out of his corner swinging with 128 yards and two touchdowns in the Rams' 31-21 win. 
At home the following week, Henry Ellard caught 12 passes for 230 yards and three touchdowns to key a 31-17 win over the Colts. Back to throw, Mikowski again, sets, fires up and out to the right. Intercepted this time, picked off this time by Vince Newsom. He might go all the way. The Rams' defense went on the offensive the next weekend against Green Bay when safety Vince Newsom returned an interception 81 yards for the first touchdown of his career. The Rams forged a 31 to nothing lead after Greg Bell erupted for a 45 yard touchdown. Bell's 221 yards rushing were the fourth highest in team history and his drive sustaining runs in the fourth period helped the Rams escape with their third straight win, 41 to 38. Down to the five as he gets to the left end for the touchdown. Next up, the 49ers. Rolls right to throw. Fires deep down the right for Flipper Anderson. Open. Caught at the 20, 15, 10, 5, and he's in for the touchdown. Willie Anderson caught the first touchdown pass of his career, while the defense kept the Niners out of the end zone. Still, the Rams trail 12 to 10. But with three minutes left in the final period, the Rams forced a fumble. Loose ball, loose ball at about the 18, and the Rams recover. Quarterback Jim Everett then engineered a brilliant nine-play, 72-yard drive. Two of his passes found tight end Pete Holahan, good for 47 yards. The drive ate up all but two seconds on the clock to set up the game winner. Step back, the ball down, the kick is up, and it is good! With two seconds showing on the clock. From 26 yards, the Rams have the lead 13 12 with two seconds joined on the score. From training camp until the conference title game, injuries plagued an inconsistent Rams defense. Number 93, Doug Reed, finished the season on injured reserve and depended on men like Sean Miller, Mike Peel, and Alvin Wright to pick up the slack. Linebacker Kevin Green led the team in sacks for the second straight year and was joined by Fred Strickland, Larry Kelm, Mark Messner, Mel Owens, Frank Stams, Mike Wiltshire, and rookie George Bethune. The special teams and secondary had their share of heavy hitters with the likes of Anthony Newman, Vince Newsom, Leroy Irvin, Darrell Henley, Alfred Jackson, James Washington, Jerry Gray, and Mike Stewart. We went down, I heard, <laughs> there ain't nothing like feeling a quarterback's body crumble, man, when you hit him in the throat. Keep it up, keep it up, man, keep it up, man, keep it up, keep it up. Sky, Sky! In 1989, sky, sky. Kevin Green made his first trip to Honolulu for the Pro Bowl. He has emerged as one of the league's finest and fiercest pass rush specialists. The best offense against Green's tenacious charge is illegal. Hold him, Beth! Hold him! I, I hit him head up and tried to roll inside. Yeah. Now I don't know what happened then. I couldn't hold him. He's a big, strong dude, man. Yeah. Oh, that, that, that guard is strong. Both of them. Even though opposing linemen may outweigh him by as much as 50 pounds, Green's assault never ceases. Damn, I gotta beat this guy. In the offseason, Green is a captain in the Army Reserve where he drives a tank. Hey, you're, you're a good athlete, man. On the football field, he plays like one. Only his specialty is demolishing quarterbacks. In the last two seasons, no NFL player has had more sacks than Kevin Green. As Green has become one of the NFL's best at rushing the passer, his unique blend of athletic ability and enthusiasm has helped make the Rams' defense one of the league's most explosive. Oh, God, life in the pros, baby. I love it. The second Sunday in October found the Rams at home and alone atop the NFC West. Off the left wing and motion to the right. Comes to Bone Johnson, Everett to fire. For Hulahan, touchdown! Pete Against Hulahan. the visiting Falcons, the Rams never trail. From their first touchdown by Pete Holahan to their last by acrobat fullback Robert Del Pino. 
The win left the Rams at 5-0, and oh, the only undefeated team in the NFL. But in the weeks to come, they saw themselves as far from perfect. A 78-yard touchdown pass from Jim Everett to Willie Anderson didn't hold up as the Rams fell to the Bills in the final seconds. The 45, the 40, to the 30. Flipper Anderson with a remarkable play. A spectacular play. A loss at home to the Saints was followed by another in Chicago. The Rams played the Bears to a 3-3 tie late in the third quarter, but the defense could not do it alone as the offense sputtered in the 20-10 loss. The story was much the same in Minnesota. Watch it over there! The defense did not allow a touchdown. The Vikings won with seven field goals, a safety, and the occasional freak play. For four agonizing weeks, the Rams couldn't catch a break or a victory. They were at the crossroads. It was time to stand up and find out what kind of team they were. On November 11th, the New York Giants found out. The Rams laid their four-game losing streak to rest with a 31-10 mugging. Jim Everett completed a club record 18 straight passes. Deep up the left side for Cox. The second best total of all time. Caught at the 15, 10, 5, touchdown! Against Phoenix, the Rams got back into the hunt for a division title with one of their most convincing victories of the year. Pressured, fires up to the left side, intercepted, picked off by Michael Stewart at the 35, 30, 25, 20. Down to the 10, down to the 5, touchdown! Los Angeles jumped out to a 24 to nothing halftime lead and never looked back in defeating the Cardinals 37 to 14. In a rematch with the Saints in New Orleans, the Rams trailed 17-3 in the fourth quarter. Then closed the gap to 17-10 on a five-yard run by Buford McGee. Gives on a draw up the middle, this time to Buford McGee in for the touchdown. The Rams still trailed despite a masterful performance by second-year wide receiver Willie Anderson. On this historic day, Anderson caught 15 passes for a league record 336 yards. Slot left, wide right, Flipper Anderson, Everton throw, fires for Anderson. With 102 left, it is Anderson's touchdown catch that sends the game into overtime. And it's caught for the touchdown! And the Rams win 20 to 17. It is both the most exciting and frustrating game of the year, a comeback of monumental proportions, one that features the single greatest pass receiving performance in the 70 year history of the National Football League. In only his fourth season in Los Angeles, Jim Everett has become one of the NFL's elite quarterbacks. He's grown up quickly, and with maturity comes patience and the ability to see all of the field, evaluate all of the options, and deliver the ball. In 1989, Everett was the only NFL quarterback to throw for over 4,000 yards, and he led the league with 29 touchdown passes. Among Everett's targets are two of the NFL's premier receivers, Willie Anderson and Henry Ellett, who became the second all-time leading Rams receiver with 70 catches for 1,382 yards and eight touchdowns. A hamstring injury prevented Ellett from starting four games. Still, he turned in five 100-yard games and earned his second straight trip to the Pro Bowl. Willie Anderson attacks the game with Ellard's fearless approach. The 170-pound Anderson is tougher than a 50-cent steak, and opponents who try to stop him find they've bitten off more than they can chew. Anderson and Ellard became the most lethal tandem in the NFL. When they combined to average over 22 yards a catch, no two teammates in league history can make that claim. 
Ellard and Anderson, two for the road and the future. A national television audience looked on as the Rams met the defending world champions for the second time. Los Angeles built a 17 to nothing lead while allowing the 49ers just seven offensive plays. The Rams took a 27 to 10 lead into the final period. But there was a bad moon rising over Anaheim, and yes, there was trouble on the way. The 49ers scored 20 unanswered points to win by three. And to earn a wild card spot in the playoffs, the Rams had to win their last two games. Victim number one, the New York Jets. Rookie Cleveland Gary scored his first NFL touchdown. And linebacker Brett Farinez earned Defensive Player of the Week honors with three sacks and two fumble recoveries in the 38-14 L.A. win that left the Rams one win short of the playoffs. They would have to clinch that spot on the road in New England in the dead of winter on Christmas Day, 20 degrees below zero wind chill. But this was Rams weather, and it didn't bother cornerback Jerry Gray, who returned one of three Rams interceptions for a touchdown. And it couldn't stop Greg Bell, who ran and ran for 210 yards and the game-winning touchdown with less than two minutes to play. So the Rams had survived to play another day and earned another cross-country trip, this time to Philadelphia. Oh, yeah! And this time, in the rain and fog, the Rams stood up to one of the season's severest tests. Offensive lineman Irv Pankey, Tom Newberry, Doug Smith, Tony Slayton, Duval Love, and Jackie Slater neutralized the favored Eagles and gave Jim Everett the time he needed to pass for 288 yards and two touchdowns. The Eagle 39, Everett back to throw, sets, looks, fires up the right side for Ellard Cook. At the 20, to the 15, to the 10, five, touchdown. 39 yards, touchdown pass, Jim Everett. Come on, defense! Eagle defense! Everett back to throw, over the middle, and Cook for the touchdown. Yes, by sir! The Defenders Kevin Green, Fred Strickland and company threw a net around Randall Cunningham and held the Eagles to just seven points. Do something good this time, Wayne. Hey, Greg. The Rams finally threw their knockout punch in the fourth quarter when Greg Bell ripped off a 54-yard run to the Eagles' 10. 35, 40, 35, 30, 25, 20, 15. Finally ridden down and around the 10, 9-yard line. The give to Bell up into the middle. Bell struggling, gets down to around the 1-yard line and in for the touchdown. With their 21-7 win, the Rams earned the right to move another rung up the ladder. Coach in the world. This week, uh, we got one. We got another one to go now. So it was back to Los Angeles before returning east for the third straight week. Never in NFL history has a West Coast team made three straight trips east and won all three. The Rams' character and commitment was on the line against the New York Giants, a team they had beaten in their two previous meetings. The Giants easily won the first few rounds and pounded out a six-point lead when Jim Everett became an easy target for blows from Lawrence Taylor. But you gotta get a, good, get a good split and make him go around you, okay? Don't worry about it. Don't worry, we get it. With 24 seconds left in the half, the Rams swung from the heels. Sets and looks with time. Fires for the left corner, caught by Flipper Anderson, and in for the touchdown. You're an ass kicker, baby. Cool. The Giants countered with a 14-play third-quarter drive that put the New Yorkers back on top, 13-7. Two Ram field goals in the fourth period sent the game into overtime. And it 
It is good, and it's tied up with 301 to play in this ball game. Our game, what? What? Our game, what? 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 Our game. Up across the middle, Clipper can't get it at the 25, and a flag is thrown. A flag is thrown on the coverage as Sheldon White was hanging on his back, apparently. They're at the giant 25-yard line. Defensive pass interference, 39. First down. This bout, this fight to the finish, would go on an extra round. And that is when the Los Angeles Rams delivered their final flurry and drove the Giants into the ropes. For the touchdown and the Rams win it! Flipper Anderson beat the coverage up the sideline and caught it, a 30-yard strike. It was the Rams' sixth trip to the playoffs in seven years and it may well be their most satisfying, simply because they had fought so hard to attain it. The arms of the Los Angeles Rams should be raised high as the NFL's number one heavyweight contender, a team that fought the good fight, a fight to the finish.